Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter his word. God bless you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for today. Lord, we thank you. Let's just go to the business of the day. So today I want to talk to us about... The highest goal. Of the Christian. Pursuit. The highest goal. You know. Let me read. Uh, Second Timothy chapter 20 and 21 for you. Let me start with that. Second Timothy chapter 2 and. Uh, Second uh, Timothy chapter 2, 20. 20 and 21. He said, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse 21. He said, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. For three things there, he says, he shall be a vessel unto honor. He shall be a vessel unto honor. A vessel that is unto honor, for honor. Number two, you are sanctified, you are meet, prepared, qualified for the master to use you. A man that God uses qualified for God to use you. Number three, prepared unto every good work so that you can serve God acceptably. For you to be qualified for God, I said it the other time, it takes a minimum of 21 years for God to make a man that is going to use I'll give you an example with Abraham, Paul, all the apostles, every one of them at least 21 years, the least. You remember God was with Abraham. You remember in Genesis chapter 12, God you say, leave your father, your mother, and your kindred, and all of that. That was when God called him. And he obeyed. True? And then he continued with God, and God made a promise to give him a son. True? Okay, and that son, he had to wait for how many years? 20, 25 years. He waited for 25 years. That was a training program. And in that 25 years, the Bible said concerning Abraham, he staggered not in what? Unbelief. He didn't doubt. In that 25 years, God was training him. Then, after the child came, he went to God and now said, take that your son, your only son, the one that you love, come and offer him to me. And I, Abraham took him to go and offer to God. Okay? And when he got to that Mount Moriah and lifted that his knife to stab the, kill the child. And God, an angel spoke from heaven and said, hold on. And God spoke and said, Abraham, now I do what? I know that what happened? It is now that I know. After how many years? More than 25 years. Add 25 years to number of 8 years of the child. That is 30 something years. Plus, that's how much it took God to confirm a man and say, now I know. You have come to the place I have trained you enough. Now you are ready for what I have in store for you. The same thing with Daniel. The same thing with David. The same thing with Paul. After all the time Paul went to uh, um, 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 the desert of Arabia for 13 years. He came back and all of that. 
He continued. See, it is, you, will be, you will be in service. Is you are a minister in training. That's what you are. You are a minister in training. And God is just managing you, working on you. Until he brings you to oneness with him. Until he brings you to oneness with him. You become one, no longer five and six. You become one with God. Until you become one, he will not put his seal over you to be used. Meet and qualify for the master's use. Before he took Daniel, before Daniel could become an agent of change, he went through the same process. So that when you finally get to the government, you see, see all the people that God put there, see what he used them to do. They didn't go to line up with what the government is doing. They were not the man of the people. You cannot be a man of the people if you are for God. You must be a man of God. That's why you hear the word, the man of God, not the man of the people, not the man of the government. You are not a government spokesman. You are God's spokesman. You are God's oracle. So you don't line up with the men or with the government and all of that. What you are interested in is what heaven is saying, irrespective of who they are or what they are. And so God had to deal with Daniel and after he was through with Daniel, and that was why Daniel now came, they now gave a decree in the government and said, no one should worship at so and so time. Daniel defiled it. Daniel defied it and worshiped at that same time. They said that the government said they should not worship. Who, what, how could he have had that liver to be able to defy what the law says? That's why we carry people, we hear people, they come, you say, God is sending me to, 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 to the govern, to government to go and change. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. Sit down. How many of them have gone to the government? What has happened? The ones that are there now, what is happening? Until God trains you by himself, you are not ready yet. 21 years least. Jesus Christ, the same thing. He was called from his mother's womb and began. He passed him through the fire. So the Bible said that he will be the captain, made him perfect in order to be the captain of our salvation, become an example, a prototype. So for you to be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. This is actually what the Holy Spirit inside of you is doing. This is his work. What is he working on you to do? To bring you to a place where you become one with God. So your will becomes his will. Your mind becomes his mind. You now have the mind of Christ. You don't have the will of God. You think like him. You talk like him. You act like him. You become one with him. Is oneness until you brings you to that particular point. You see, I have a long way to go. Twenty-one years. God will be. That is, and let me tell you, when that work starts, 
when that work of God starts, it starts at baptism. It starts at water baptism. When you are baptized in the water, that's when that work starts. And somebody is confused. Say, how? How do you mean? Do you know what water baptism means? You say you are dead. You are buried. You are dead in Christ. It's a type of and shadow. It's a picture. God is showing you a picture of what is going to happen to you. So he walks. I told you that God walks. He, he, he walks from, he shows you the picture of the end. And then he comes back in time and begins to walk towards it. So what he has demonstrated is that when you enter into the water, you are demonstrating that you are dead with Christ. You identify with him in his death. And then from that water you come out. A new man. A new life. A life of unto holiness, a life unto righteousness. And that's what the Roman chapter 6 says. You read all through. So what you have done that time is that you have registered in the school of uh, discipleship of God. That's when you start it. But a lot of people do not know, a lot of people don't have this idea at all. So you see, that is why... <clears throat> Every single thing that God tells us to do, he knows the reason why he said you should do it. That is why your salvation has not started. Is you are not even saved in the first place if you are not baptized in the water. You have no business with a God, with God. He doesn't even, because you have not agreed with him to start with. So that is why we think that water baptism is just a side attraction and all of that. If you have not done that, you have not started. And that is why he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of, of the water and of the spirit. Verily, verily, I swear to you. And the word verily, verily means that it is established. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So the process starts at the water baptism. The Holy Ghost baptism has its own dimension and all of it, but that is not within the scope of our teaching today. I just want to. And I want to say this, whether you, whether you are playing ignorant of God or playing ignorant of the word of God or you are living your life calculating the way you want to live it, I want to sound a warning to you. If you are born again, if you have received Jesus Christ into your heart as your savior and you are making him your Lord, be careful. Find out what is written in the book and line yourself up there because if you don't do that, the consequences is a lot. You will not be excused. You will not say that you did not know. You will not say that you didn't hear. No matter who the person is. So I said everything that the Holy Spirit is doing in our life is to bring us together so that we become one with him. You know, when you are one with somebody, when you say you are one with somebody, you are on the same page. You say the same thing. You do the same thing. You go to the same place. That is, you are yoked together. True or false? That is what God is doing. That's the Holy Spirit walking in you to bring you to oneness. And now let me say, <coughs> there are two aspects of the oneness that God is bringing you to. Two, that oneness. There are two components of that thing that makes one. Number one is that he's going to bring you to conforming you to his purity. Purity, purity, purity. You must be pure like God. You must be as pure as God. You must be holy like God. He is working to bring you there. I will show you how he does it. (coughs) 
Titus chapter 2, verse 14. <coughs> Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from what? All iniquity and do what? Purify us unto who? Himself. A peculiar people. Zealous of good works. There are two things that he is preparing us for that make up that unity. When he has done this now, you can now say, I am one with God. And it's mentioned in this scripture, the two of them. One is purity, to prepare you, to clean you up, so that you can be as pure as himself. You see, zealous of good work, before you can do anything for him that is acceptable. Number two component of it, is to bring you to his perfect will. These are the things that the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. To make you holy. And to make you come to alignment to the will of God. So it is no longer your will. You can now say like Jesus Christ has said, as it is written in the volume of the books, here I am, here I come to do thy will. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Give me First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise, like the same suffering. Equip yourself, no. Take that same responsibility of suffering yourself with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Verse 2. That he no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the loss of men. But what? To the will of God. <clears throat> These are the two things that God is doing in our life through the Holy Spirit. To make us perfect. To make us mature. To make us one with him. Clean you up so that you will be pure in your heart. Clean. Without spot and wrinkle in your heart. And then to bring you to a place where you line up. It is no longer your will. He will work on you so you come to the point that you will know. You don't have your will anymore left. Your will stands numb. In his presence. No longer your ways. You must do it his way. And it will, that time, it will no longer be a struggle. But... There is an opponent <coughs> that have stood against this. You becoming pure and holy, living a holy life and living in the very will of God. There is an opponent. There is an enemy. There is an evil that have fought you to a standstill till date. You know the name of that person. Is called self. Self. Is called self. The greatest enemy. Your greatest enemy is you. <clears throat> because self wants to protect himself. If you say something that he's, he doesn't like, he will fight you. He will cry out. He's a lover of himself. <clears throat> Self loves himself more than he loves God, more than he loves any other person. He fights and protects it. So he doesn't want any destruction. He doesn't want anything to happen to it at all. 
he will fight with anything that is in him through keeping malice, through backbiting, through murmuring, through stealing, through lying. He will do everything to protect him. The greatest enemy. I will give you a shocker this morning. Fasting and prayer can never remove it. No matter if you like fast for one thousand years, it won't. It won't remove it. That's why all the fasting and the prayers and all of that. When you finish, it's still there. Your love, loving, and all of that cannot remove it. Your work for God can never remove it. You are coming to church every day, 24 hours in a day, seven days in a way. It can never remove it. It will still be there. There is only one thing that can take it away. And that thing that can take it away is that same thing that will destroy it. So you don't want it to be destroyed. So you will fight it. You don't want it. There is only one thing that can destroy it. There is only one thing that can remove it. And the only one person that it is God's responsibility. It is not your responsibility to remove it. It is not your responsibility. And that is why you have tried everything with fasting and prayer and all of that. It is not yet gone. It is God's own assignment. The Bible says it is God that is at work in you. Both to will and to do. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, he said, Now, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the, that great shepherd of, sheep, of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you what? Who is going to make you perfect? It's not you. Is one that is at work to make you perfect in every word, good works. It is his responsibility. It is his job to do it. That is what he's doing inside of you. How many of you have the Holy Spirit in there? How many of you have the Holy Spirit? That Holy Spirit that is inside of you, he's there on assignment and his major assignment is to perfect you to bring you to perfection to mature you to bring you to oneness with God and that oneness with God is to bring you make you holy and make you align to the will of God both, of, both you and God becomes one you are no longer pursuing your agenda you are no longer pursuing your goal but that of God. That's what the Holy Spirit is. That's why you hear, he that began a good work in you. So when you hear about the work God is doing, you know what it is. Because when you don't understand it, you are going to be fighting it and working against it. Year in, year out. That is why somebody can be born again 30 years and you look at the person you have nothing to write home about. It is God and God alone that will do it. It's not you. Your fasting cannot take away, deal with self. Your prayers, no matter how many tongues you speak, it can't take it away. There is only one thing that will deal with it. One person. And that is God. I'm going to show you how he does it. <laughs> and what he tried to do is to destroy self. Are you ready for to see how he does it? Fire. By fire. He will pass you through fire. 
It is only fire that can kill, that can destroy self. Nothing else. Fasting won't take it away. Your prayer for 25 hours in a day will not take it away. You are fasting for 600 days will not take it away. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Even in Jesus Christ, he went through that same fire. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, say the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's what? Fire. And, the, and like fuller's soap. So when he finishes burning you, hmm, he will use soap and water and clean you up. You must go fire. You see that fire? You must go through it. If you have not gone through that, it's only fire that can remove it. And he shall sit as a refiner and what? Purifier of silver, and he shall purify who? The sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. He must use fire to destroy self. Prayer doesn't destroy it. It's only fire. It's like gold. You take gold and put gold into that's what you think. <laughs> if you want to be very honest to yourself, haven't you been fasting and praying? Has it gone? The reason is because we have refused the invitation and allow God to set you on fire. <laughs> Say with me, Lord, set me on fire. If you don't say it, it means you don't want it. Set my life on fire. You know, when you say, set me on fire, that is on fire. That is, when, you, when we say, Lord, fire, set me on fire, how many of you want to receive the fire of God? Fire to go and win souls. Uh -uh. Fire to go and do miracles. If there's no fire to do miracles. If fire burns. Fire burns. Your clothes. It will burn it. It will receive power. It's the Holy Ghost. When the anointing comes, you receive power. But when the fire comes, you don't receive power. It will burn you. And so everybody is afraid of fire. So I say number one. If God is going to deal with it, he's going to set your life on fire. And that fire is fire of trial, persecutions, hard times. You will fast, you will pray, you will fast, you will pray for open door, for breakthrough, for this to happen, for that to happen, at the end of the day, nothing, nothing. How many of you have been there? A young man fasted for seven days in the office where he's working so that, because they were sacking people, so he took fasting and prayer and fasted and prayed on the seventh day of his fasting and prayer, they sacked him. After seven days of fasting and prayer, they sacked him. He was confused. He was asking for promo yeah, promotion. Yeah, he was for promotion. He was fasting and prayer for promotion. On the seventh day, they sack him. <laughs> Say, 
sack. Leave us alone. He was fasting unto God for promotion. When the end of the fast came, after seven days, not eating, not drinking, wine, water only, he came to the office on the eighth day and saw sack letter. Your services, the first of all, appreciate all that you have done in the But your services are no more needed. You require, you can go. James chapter 1, verse 5. If anyone do not understand what is going on in your life, if you don't understand what is going on, remember where we started in verse 2. Go to verse 2. Now, now, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Number 4, but let patience have her perfect work. Perfect. That you may be perfect and the entire wanting nothing. God is going to get you to this point. So all his dealings, in case you don't understand, you are confused about what is going on. I don't understand what is going on again. Go ask him. He will let you know. Ask him for wisdom. He will tell you that he is one. You remember the agreement you had with him at water baptism. He has come to do his work. The contract that was signed. The contractor has started. He has brought equipment and all of that on site. Then they are about to start work now. You are resisting the work. Why? That's why some people will stay there for 20 years, stay there for 30 years. That work has not started. But the equipment has been there. But the work has not started. 30 years the work has not started because you are, you are resisting it. Another thing that is going to, is dealing with flesh, with the self-man, the man self. You know, self came from the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. That thing must be taken away. Until that thing, God will never, he says, so that no man will take glory in his presence. No man. That self. You see, you know, when you hear people say, um, I have paid the price. I have done this because of uh, the whatever. You have not seen anything yet. When God is done with you, you will not remember whether there is anything like price or not and all of that. You will just, you will just be like this. Lord, anything that you want. When you hear people say, hey, we have paid the price. We have done this. We have done. You have not started yet. Your journey is still far. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. <coughs> The first one is you. It will pass you through fire. The second one is your works. The things that you do. <clears throat> so that you can offer unto him good works. Zealous of good works. Not any kind of works. Good one. Acceptable. He said, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by what? It will not be revealed by fasting and prayers. It will be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he had built it upon or thereupon, he shall receive what? A reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer what? Loss. But he himself shall be saved. Yes. So as by fire, you, by fire, you will be saved by fire. You will go through the same fire. Your works will be tried by fire. To know the extent. For example, the Bible said that we are God's building. Okay? 
The Bible said that we are God's building, according to that first Corinthians chapter 3. And in the book of Luke 6 or Matthew 7, it talks about the building. He said, I will tell you who a wise man is. A wise man is one that built his house on a rock. So you are the building that is being built on a rock. So you are going to, he said, when the rain comes, because rain is going to come after you. He said, when the flood comes, because flood will come after you. The wind will come because wind will surely come after you. You can't fast it away. You can't pray it away. And the purpose of all this sin is to destroy, is to burn off all those dross that is in us. To remove those impurities. That's how God chooses to, chooses to do it. He will remove those impurities and then make you alive and bring you to a point where you will know that you don't, need, you don't have confidence in yourself anymore. Well, your confidence will now be in God. So the question now is, the people that you are building, what kind of material are you using to build? Will they stand the test of time? What kind of food are you eating? What kind of message are you hearing? What kind of thing that they are be, being fed with? You are being fed with milk. You are being fed with meat. Break through and open doors. That's why you cannot last. That's why we lie and cheat and cut corners to get that, those things. Because anytime you lie, anytime you cheat, anytime you do any of those things and all of that, it means that you have not even started anything anywhere. When you falsify figures, when you abandon God and abandon his work to go and do your own, you have not started yet. Until God will become number one in your life. That's what he's doing. He must do it and he will do it by fire. Fire of affliction. He will torment your life with it. Until those self is gone. So we have a church today. You just gather all we is. Uh, I just want you to try it. If you think, I don't understand what I'm saying. Listen to all the messages everywhere. Is it how you are going to be healed? How you are going to be delivered? How you are going to make it? How you are going to, your enemy will die? How, that, how they are going to die one by one? Who will die before the other? And all of that. These are the things you keep hearing. You go breakthrough, open doors, success, key to success, and all of that. You will continue to remain bread. For the enemy. He will be eating you up. And you go, when you, when, that is why you can't do business with such people. You, they can't give you their word and they stand. They will tell you they are coming. When they tell you they are coming, you means, it means the opposite. Whenever he asks, the, by the grace of God, I will do it. It means that he's not going to do it. They are not men who swear to their own hearts and change not. Who will stand before the holy presence of God? He said, men who swear by their own heart and they refuse to budge. These are people. For God to produce that kind of human beings, it will take fire and it's a long process. It takes years. A minimum of 21 You remember Peter? Peter was talking to the, to the Gentiles. He was eating with them, dining with them, and all of that. So when these other Jews came, he withdrew. Something that made Paul to come out in the open, just like he, and chastised him. Because that thing is evil. You are destroying the basic foundation for which these people are standing, which is Christ. The Lord that has been banished, you are bringing into reintroducing it. He 
It took years for Peter. After I be even while you're in the service of God, even me that is talking to you, the same thing. Twenty-one years working on you. Twenty-one years that you you acknowledge him and then let him constantly. He will be doing it non-stop. If you stop. <laughs> when you want to start, you start from the beginning again. All over. But can I tell you something about gold? <clears throat> Do you know that gold, after you have purified gold, purified is pure now. No atom of death. You know it can get dirty. You know the gold can get dirty. When it gets dirty, do you need to put it in fire? What do you do? You wash it. <laughs> But the purifying fire is gone. Inside, there is no. It's not that you're not going to make mistakes. The mistakes are there. And that is how God will use it, just like he said to Peter, Paul. He said, I will not allow this agent of Satan to, he said, I will allow it to come in order to keep you in check. Because as long as you are in this life, the temptations and all of that are there, here and there. You can't avoid it. <clears throat> so when the gold purifies you the blood now comes to continue to cleanse you the blood now comes to cleanse the blood does not purify what the blood does is cleanse fire purifies so all that we have been doing with a gold that is uh, full of dross and impurities is to be cleaning it. When you finish cleaning it, the impurity is still there. At the slightest provocation, you release the venom. When they press you, when they press you, what comes out? When they squeeze that orange, is it a sweet orange that comes out? Or, you know the orange that is sweet, when you, ah, you then because it's sweet. Then when you squeeze the one that is not sweet, that is bitter, when you, when you squeeze it and you suck the juice, what do you do? Your face, how, do you, how does your face look? Like somebody who ate poison. Mm. You squeeze your face and frown your face. It slaps, it's sour. When they squeeze you, what comes out? Malice. When they squeeze you, malice will come out. When they squeeze you, anger will come out. When they squeeze you, jealousy will come out. When they squeeze you, envy will come out. When they squeeze you, backbiting will come out. When they squeeze you, murmuring comes out. When they slap you on this side, what comes out? Smile. When they insult you, when they didn't thank you or, or, or honor you they support, the way they're supposed to, you get angry. You are still alive. You are not yet dead. Remember, you have been buried with him. You are dead with Christ. A dead man doesn't get angry. So you will be tried. Your works will be tried. So the kind of food, even you, you know the kind of books and messages you listen to. Forty dangerous prayer. Key to forty dangerous prayers. There are books. That is the kind of book we read. Anointing for breakthrough. That is the kind of books. This one is carrying the glory, carrying the presence. You see, he has how many millions of followers and all of that. You see, you see, when they pray, what are they praying for? Breakthroughs in order, uh, fruit of the womb, uh, open doors, and all. Why wouldn't they come? Change your message and see whether they will come. They will continue following you. That thing that you are giving them, will you sustain them? Can they be, can they be fit for the master's use? Prepared unto good works. Unto every good works. A vessel of honor. Are, they vessel, are you preparing them vessels of honor? 
of vessels of dishonor. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold what? Temptations. Verse 7. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with what? Though it be tried with what? What is tried with fire? The gold. You. Why is it trying you with fire? To purify the gold. So that that gold will not have any impurities inside him. Fire is what removes gold, uh, impurities from the gold. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Have you seen it? It's fire of affliction. Is fire. That fire will burn you for 21 days at least. The least minimum, 21 days, it will burn you consistently. Cognate experience, 21 years, non-stop. Then you will cry, God, why me? And once that process starts, it's only you that can abort it. God won't go back. I'm going to give you seven outcomes of that fire. You can see. There are seven outcomes. When that fire comes upon you, you will know. You will know if you have been burned. That fire has burned you whether you have been purified in this area. The first, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 10. 10 to 12. For they verily for a few days, those were, go to verse 9 or verse 8 so that you can get the picture. Furthermore, Okay, but if you be without chastisement, you see, whereof all are partakers, then are ye what? Bastard, and not what? Son, except until you are, you know the chastisement of God is him that is doing it all. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirit and live when your Father punishes you for what you did wrong? You accept it. For the wise ones, so there are those when their Father punished them, they will beat, their, they beat the hell out of their Father. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our own profit, that we might be partakers of his words. Have you seen it? When he has chastised you, when he, that his fire has burnt you, what you are going to see is holiness. What is holiness? Separation, purity. You don't attend parties. You don't go to clubs. You don't give in to, you are not giving to enjoyment and partying. You know, there are people who will, who will wake up from their bed in the morning, enter their bathroom, 
they had their bags wear their fine clothes put their fine perfume then they go to their cupboard and bring out their passports and then they will enter their car go to the airport and they said i am going to greece for a birthday party pastor what is wrong with it everything is wrong with it birthday party who is the who are, who are they doing their birthday party they are third son and somebody will leave his house and say i am going for a wedding in uh, port harcourt is my friend cousin's brother sister A soldier does not mingle himself with the affairs of men so that he may please the one that called him. God will destroy these things in your life. He will destroy it. Party spirit. That's one of the works of the flesh. My father died 40 years ago. We are turning him on the grave. You block the road. The way are shabby. You are born again. You are a child of God. What is wrong with it? Everything is wrong with it. Come, let me tell you. Naturally speaking, naturally, we remove God and remove every other thing. Do you know sweet things are not good to the body? How many of you know that? Things that are very sugary and sweet, they are not good for the body, naturally speaking. The same thing applies to the spirit man. You can't find God in pleasure. Check all the men that have encountered God. Of course, when God starts, he will burn all those things off from them. They are chaff. Holiness unto God. That's why you say, follow men with all peace. And holiness, without which no eye shall see the Lord. So why he is doing this in and purging you and doing all those is so that you can share in his holiness. That's one thing that the fire does. Number two. Give me verse First Peter chapter four, verse one. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us, see, in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from what? No more struggle for sin. When they say sin shall not have dominion over you, you are, it doesn't have dominion over you. You are not struggling under sin anymore. You can live above sin. It comes through fire. Himself. You remember all this is himself. Self wants to please himself. The loss of the eye, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. He must destroy them. And he will destroy them by fire. For as much as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Let the same mind be in you. For he that has suffered in the flesh You can never sleep until you, you sleep with a woman. You sleep with a man. Any little temptation, you'll fall inside it. Any little temptation, you'll fall. Besetting sin. Lay aside all sins and wait that don't easily beset us. It's only fire that will remove it. Punishment, affliction. He will pass you through it. 
and burn it and burn it and burn it. You come to a point where you are no longer struggling. You come to a point where even if they leave you, you is only you and that man that is not your husband, that is not your wife. You are in that solitary place that nobody is watching and all that. The thought can't even come to your head at all. It can't enter. It's not the one that you go and start fasting and praying. God will remove this temptation. He had done it in the past. The fire has burnt it. In a man that the fire had dealt with, won't have that kind of thought. It won't even cross your mind. I told you a few years ago, it was in the house. I was on my own. No, there was nobody. My wife has gone. She was working in um, Integrated as the GM then, the general manager of Integrated. So, I was a pastor. I was getting ready to go to work. My, I was in my mother's um, house for two and a half years. So in the morning, she had gone. My wife had gone. Everybody had gone. I was alone with the house help. The next thing I saw, somebody just came with towel. He said, am I calling her? In the morning, tight towel. Am I calling her? That, no, he didn't say, he said, I called her. I said, I didn't call you. I was irritated with her presence and all of that for coming around and tying to well and all that. I was just irritated and all that. So she just, I just banged the door and continued with what I was doing, finished and left. I didn't even, it was weeks later. It now dawned on me that that was, it was a setup. The thought didn't even cross my mind. Until the fire purges that thing, that temptation will still continue to be there. You fast is a temporal measure. You fast and pray, you move it a little. After some time, you will return again. It is still there. How do you know that you have dealt with anger? It is when somebody annoys you and you are calm. That's when. And then another one annoys you another time and you are calm. And another person annoys you again. Uh -huh. That is when you know you have arrived. But when they annoy you, fire for fire. You have not started yet. So, no more sin. Give me verse 2. The next one is that you now find yourself lining up in the will of God. Verse 2 says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to lust after men, but to the will of who? Now God's will has become your will. It's through fire. That I might be filled with the knowledge of his will. It doesn't just come that way. You are praying that prayer. You are telling God, God, remember you are walking me to do it and do it. You remember you are the one that began that. That's the meaning of that prayer. That I might be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and all of that. Lord, remember your work. So do it and do it quick in my life. So that my will will line up to your own. It's no longer my will. It comes through fasting. I mean, it comes through fire. Another thing that comes through, the result of it. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. 8 to 11. We are troubled on every side. Now watch. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our what? That the life of Christ will be evident in your body is through persecution, is through trial, is through all kinds of things God is going to take you through. So that the very life of God. If that, if that spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised him from the dead will quicken your mortal, you will be strong. 
when you are 80 years, somebody look at you, you look 40. You remember Joshua, Caleb. He said, I was with Moses 40 years ago. Now, when he was talking to Joshua, he was 80. He said, the same strength I had 40 years ago, I still have it now. So give me battle to go and fight. At 80, he was ready to go into the field to fight. 80 years. That's the life of God at work in a man. So that's why you say the beauty is not the outward making or braiding of hair and putting pound, uh, um, 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 pancake. Is it not pancake they call it? You do found you know there's one they call foundation. And if you see the amount of money they spend, the glory, the beauty is the one that is inside. The beauty of the inward, a meek and quiet spirit is the beauty that comes from inside. When that glory that is inside radiates from you, you will ever be looking young looking handsome, looking beautiful. Sarah, you know how old she was when she went to Egypt with her husband Abraham and the king was looking at her. Sarah, how old was Abraham when he left, when God said, leave your father, your mother? How old was he? 75. How old did you think Sarah was? 65. And just add maybe like 10 years when they had that encounter with, when they now, because they lived, after they have lived and all of that, it would have been something near 70 or thereabouts. And a king was looking at her, eyeing her, wanted to sleep with her, a 70-year-old woman. When you see a 70-year-old woman today, <laughs> you see what the life of God does. Even though our outward man perishes, our inward man is renewed. The glory of that inward man comes out. It is sin that destroys it. Divine favor that comes, you know, you know, you know, the prosperity people and all of that. You know what they tell you? Key to favor. Plead the blood. Because he say, when I see the blood, I will do what? So plead the blood. Then you have favor. <laughs> oh, yeah, plead the blood now. Go ahead. You haven't you been pleading the blood over? It is fire that does that work. The very life of God inside of you comes out. The glory of God inside of you comes out. That no man can resist it. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Verse 11. For we, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal body. Sickness, diseases, and all of that will not have its inroad in this your body. Fire! That's what produces it. It's the training of God that produces this. If we allow God to do this, but because we are so protective, we, we don't want the self to be destroyed. And nobody can correct you. Nobody can chastise you. Nobody can tell you something that you don't want to hear. And why is he talking like that? Do you think I'm a child? Do you think I'm a fool? Why should you talk to me like that? I will not come to that church again. <laughs> don't come. Go to where they will part, massage your flesh and your self. Give me Second Corinthians chapter one verse eight. This is another one. 
that the fire of God will do. See what he does. For we, no, we will not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble. Have you seen it again? Which came to us in Asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength insomuch that we despaired of even of life. Verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead. God will bring you to a place where you will no longer have confidence in that yourself. Where you have no confidence in that your money. Where you have no confidence in that your education. Where you have no confidence in that your job. Where you have no confidence in those things that you think that protect you, that you give you. You don't have any. He said, woe unto them that depend on the arms of the flesh. That's why I, I tell you, God, he will, raise, he will raise it down. The fire will destroy it. So that your confidence will only be in God and God alone. When you still feel that, you know, I can give it to them. You know, I can preach. You know, I can talk. You know, I can do this. You know, I can, I, I, self, God will destroy. You know what he did to Moses? <laughs> Moses was in the palace. And when God brought him out, and when God finished with him, <laughs> Moses became a stammerer. <laughs> he lost confidence in himself. He lost confidence in himself. And who do I say now? Can say, Pastor John, you are going to preach next Sunday. Eh, hey, Pastor, eh, hey, how many hours? <laughs> how many hours are you giving me? Is it one or two or one and a half hours? Okay, 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 no problems, no problem. <laughs> you know what it means? You have not started. See, till today, every time that I'm coming to, I'm going to preach, it's my children that will, will, that will tell you. If you see the struggle, the fight between me and my wife. Another kind of fight, though, because you, you see how they are open their eyes. Eh, pass or fight. So let's hear the fight. Is a struggle of who is going to preach. You preach today. You say, I will not preach. You will preach. I don't have anything. You say, you don't have anything. I say, you say, go pray. No, I will pray. No, go pray. Preach. I will not preach. Preach. I don't know what to say. My heart will be beating. Every time I stand to, I don't know what, how am I going to say? Where will I, what, I will, what will I tell people? You think it is because you have been doing it. It is not by might. It is not by power. But by my spirit. You can be quoting that scripture, but in reality it's not working. You still be doing it based on your strength and your ability because you have known it. Is it not just to open the Bible and then, then, then you gather some scriptures and put them together and you say, oh Lord, help me to deliver in Jesus' name. And then you come. It doesn't work like that. Word message that is going to transform and change lives of men and women are the ones that are prepared in the fire of fullness of God. It takes a long time. It's not a, a quick journey. But while you are on duty, while you are in the job, you are being trained on the job. How many have I given you? I've given you the share in his holiness. Okay. Another one is uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10.
that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection, I want you to be seen. And the fellowship of his what? The fellowship of what? Suffering. Suffer. To fellowship. You know how you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? You fellowship with the suffering. That is, you suffer like Christ. That's when the power of resurrection, the resurrection power of God functions in your life. It is there. But if you want the fullness to show in your life, to, that is why he say, arise, shine. Arise. Take this responsibility. Allow God to do his work so that your life can beam the light full. Full light. Arise and let God do his work. And then this glory is going to rest upon you. You are going to experience the glory and the power of God in a dimension that you never dream of, no. It comes through affliction, suffering, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. If by any reason, or if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So you begin to see it in the life of Peter and Paul and the apostles and all of that. You see the kind of thing that happened in their lives. So sometimes you wonder, how can we get to this point? Is it through fastings? Is it through prayers? We have fasted, we have prayed. But your, your effort is not enough to deal with this. It will take the fire of God to purify you. You know, holiness is power. Give me Romans chapter 1 verse 4, please. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. And declared, verse 3, <coughs> verse 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, verse 4, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of what? Holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of what? Holiness. Holiness is power. Raw power. When you, when you have this kind of power, it's not the one that you struggle and shout until you crack your whole voice and all of that. It's just a simple whisper. In the name of Jesus, things are happening. The life of God, because the, your, you are being, your body, the gold has been purged, has been purified. You are clean. Holiness is power. Purity is power. If you are pure, the wicked one will not touch you. Sickness and that's where the life of God functions in you. How many have I given you? The seventh one and the last one. Galatians chapter four. Uh, Galatians chapter six, verse fourteen. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I, and I unto what? The world. You are crucified. For somebody, you know what it means to crucify? You carry somebody and crucify the person through suffering. He said, the world has been crucified unto you and you unto the world. So you don't have any pleasure. The things of this world, you are dead to it. It doesn't concern you anymore. They don't appeal to you anymore. You buy the whole of uh, Yaba. You don't buy the whole of Yaba. It doesn't bother anybody. Paul said, I don't want to know anything amongst you when I come, except Jesus Christ and him alone crucified. Your wealth and your money and all, whatever, the, it doesn't, we don't glory in the flesh. It's not our business. We don't talk about it. 
you don't even mention it. These are men who are dead. Nothing in this life. The latest car come out, you want to buy it, and then buy a big, you see, you, you buy a big car because others are buying it. There is nothing wrong about buying a car. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. If you have money, buy it. But don't let your life depend on it. A time will come. Don't let it be a barrier between you and God. Because there is a tendency inside of it. But you see, God will allow you to have, after he had dealt with you, and then brings you back to it and gives it to you. So that you will, not, you will know that it is not your might or your power has gotten you this world. But God and God alone made it. And you humble yourself. And you don't use it to intimidate other people. And you don't use it. You know when you are in that big cars and all of that, and when you are driving, your head is swell. Your head is as big as the boot of that car. It's as big as the car. And then when you come out and park the car, you come out. You gently park it. Close the door. Or you, you fly the... You know those things? It's in your head. Then you feel... Like, then you look at your own and then you look at what other people are parking. These are the things that God. It's pride of life. It's inside. Nobody's seeing it. Only God. So when you come in, you want to be treated special because you came because you are a big man and right? you came with a special car. And then you are full of yourself. You know, so many of those. God will deal with all those things. Verse 17. Of uh, Philippians 3.17. Let me clean it up now. Philippians 3.17. <clears throat> Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as you have us for an example. Verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, verse 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind what? Earthly things. Their mind is on earthly things. How do you know you mind earthly things? When you cut corners, when you lie, when you cheat, when you defraud, when you don't follow the due process, because the process is long, you want to make it short. So you find somebody who can help you cut the process. You are interested in the things of this life. Allow the law. Allow the process that is put in place. Let it have its course. If you are coming in the whatever, go and join the line. Go to the back. Stay there. Wait. Don't shunt the line. Because you know somebody that knows somebody. And then other people that are lining up. You know God is training you. He's training you with patience. He's training you with a whole lot of things. You are, just like my wife, we say, you are doing 360 degrees recruitment. He's watching you everything that you are doing. And you find that he wants you to go and queue up in that line. You refuse to queue up. You go and shunt. When you finish, they will send you back. When you finish that thing that you, for which you shunt, you shunted, it will not be given to you. You will lose it. You will try everything. It won't work. I told you how I, had a, I have a farm in Ibadan. If you see the amount of money and time I invested in that thing, I almost liquidated my wife that time. Because every money I will collect from her. One day she said, but you have been putting too much money in this farm. Nothing to show for it. I said, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Meanwhile, I'm ignorant of what I was doing. <laughs> Everything. 
labored and labored and labored, invested millions inside it. I didn't receive one naira profit. No profit from that. One day I just came back. I just sat down in the parlor. I was looking inside into the city. I said, what kind of life is this? But I'm a veterinary doctor. That's what I was telling to myself. Does it mean that all these things that I learned in the school are nonsense? Okay, the people, the, 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 the boys, the people that gathered, the village people that came to the farm, I taught them how to do this. And they are doing it. And they are succeeding. And I now felt ashamed to tell them to come and help me do the same thing that I taught them to do. Because I'm doing it, it's not working. There is nothing that I have not done. I finally closed the farm. The boy that I left there sold the machines and sold everything and took off. The farm was dilapidated. God. <laughs> he will drag you. He will, you see God. I keep telling he will bring you to that point. Why you are serving him all? <clears throat> so that you are serving him does not mean that it's just like what I, saw, I told you about Abraham. He said to Abraham, now I know. <laughs> now I'm putting my seal on you. But he has been there for more than 25 years. He said it's only now. You have passed the test. So you can now go. That's why he now became Father Abraham, the father of many nations. That's why he became one of the patriarchs. You want to be a patriot, a member of that patriot, then allow yourself to pass through the crucible of fire. You got the materials and all of that, the equipment that they used to do the job have been lying waste, but you have refused it. God wants to do that work in you. No. Some of you, what you do is you just come and sit down and look for what to steal and go. One day that fire will burn you. One day, the day that fire will burn you. The day that fire will burn you. It will destroy you. Fire does not burn to give you anointing. It burns to destroy. The purpose of fire is for judgment. Anywhere fire. Look at what he did to Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 6. The seraphim came and put a coal of fire and touched his mouth. What has Isaiah been doing all this while, all these years? Was he not serving God and prophesying? Yet not approved of God until that day. In that day, he was punched with that fire. And then he became clean. And then he now said, who shall now go for us? Who can now do the will of God? He said, Lord, here am I. Send them. You know, that's what we do. Let's pray for soul. You are praying for soul. When you, you yourself, you are not, you, are, you don't have, what kind of prayer is that? What kind of, we are just lying, deceiving us. You know, are, that is why you use, you use people that are, proven in a particular area to pray certain prayers. You are just praying for God to give you to, for, for the spirit of giving and all of that. You now bring a, 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 a aradite gummed man and his hand is aradite hand. You come here, he doesn't give. You tell him to pray for the spirit of uh, giving. He will not walk. If you want to see the spirit of it, then get somebody who is, who is a giver and let him stand in that office because that grace is there. That grace will be released on the people. You can't bring somebody who has cancer, who is suffering from all kinds of whatever, and say, do you believe in divine healing? Nobody will listen to it. It won't work. 
You use people that have been proven. That is why God, before God will choose you, he said a bishop, a bishop will be what? A man that is what? Blameless. God doesn't use half and half, whatever. But in the course of training and purging and working on you and all of that, yeah, you'll be seeing glimpses of here. Yeah, it's God's design. That's how he designed it. And he knows how to take care of his people within those period of time. But when that man is now trained, you have come to age. Just like he said to Moses, concerning Moses, when Moses had come to age, Brothers and sisters, there is a training process with God. Man will train you, God will train you himself. If you have not given yourself to the training of God, you are the one delaying the process. You know you can live the rest of your life from the beginning to the end till you die and go to wherever without God's work on you. That is a very sad story for you. Your, this, your situation is very, very, very pitiable. A pitiable situation. I don't know how God is going to deal with you. You resisted him. That is why they do not resist him when you hear his voice coming. I am coming oh, to do this work. Primarily, he's working in you to make you perfect. So, the working that God is doing now is, is the kind of message that you hear, the kind of church that you go, the kind of things that you subject yourself to. Is the message that you hear so that when you go out there, when the fire comes, when the rain comes, when the wind comes, you will withstand it. And actually, that is how I, Pastor Fred, and our team will be able to beat our chest and say, yes, our work will stand. But if you go out now and is, they hear that somebody got pregnant, they mention your name. You are not married, but you are the one responsible. There is a break, break in somewhere. They mention your name, you are the one. There is a, an armed robber that was caught somewhere and all of that. They say he's a member of his church. They say there is this one that divorced his wife and is sleeping. And he says he's a member of it. I don't have, you know what it means? I will just go and, whether he's to commit suicide or what, because nothing, all that I have done is wasted. And my own life will also will pass through the same fire. So when we say you are my glory, my wealth is you. You are the wealth. You are sitting down here and those who are watching online, who are watching us online and all of that, you are our resources. You are our money. You are our wealth. You are our, our glory. Just like people go and do business and they make profit and all of that, you are my profit. You are our profit. If you do well, if you do good, that's why Paul spent time he praying. He said, you are my glory. You are my everything. There is nothing. If, I, if you people don't make it to heaven, it means my work do not stand. I have lost everything. So that is why I am careful about the kind of menu, the recipe I put together to offer to deliver the food. You know, my food is not always, it's not sweet sensation. Um, uh, our messages are not sweet sensation. They are mostly bitter. And they're offensive. The truth in it, offensive. And that's why we spend a lot of time digging through the Bible, praying and searching the scripture, and yielding to the Holy Spirit to speak so that we can bring the word for the noun and the season that is able to build the people up and then offer them their inheritance among them that are sanctified. In Jesus' name. Please stand to your feet. <clears throat> Father, we thank you. The entrance of your word, it gives us light. It's a lamp unto my feet. 
is a light unto our path. We have heard you speak to us today that the workings and the dealings of the Holy Spirit in our life is to bring us to oneness with God so that we become a man and woman that God uses and not a man or woman that uses God. Father, here we are today. We are asking you to help us. We are deeply sorry for those of us who do not understand what you've been doing in our life, that you are the one indeed that is at work in us, both to will and to do your good pleasure. That you are the one that began a good work in us and that you are faithful to keep at that work until you bring it to perfection. Many of us lack knowledge of it. We are ignorant and so we have resisted you over the years, Lord. Father, today, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the church, we say we are sorry. For we have been acting in ignorance. Now that we know, we ask for mercy. And also ask you to give us the grace. So that when you return to do this work, we will gladly open our heart. Because you say you are knocking at the door of every heart. So that you can come and do that work, Lord. We give you the liberty we give you all our space to invade our space and do that work which you have long waited for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you today. Bring the sword of your spirit. Bring the fire. We are ready so that every dross in our life will be born of. So that our will will line up to your own will. So that we can offer sacrifices in righteousness, in purity, in holiness, and all the glory will be ascribed unto you. Father, this is our heart desire today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father, today as we release your people into their society today, this week, we ask for the blessings of this week to come upon them today. We ask, Lord, that every one of us Everyone, the grace and the strength and the wisdom to go through this week until we meet on the next Sunday again, Father, to thank you for what you have done and to look up to you again for more grace because you said without you we can do nothing. We are like the branch and you are the vine, connected to you by which we draw life always and constantly from you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless your inheritance today, Lord. We bless them with the blessings of the Lord. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Lord, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you and God bless you. <coughs> Amen.